रामाय राम भद्राय रामचंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय पत ये नम अयोध्य कांड चैप्टर नंबर वन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन द इंस्टलेशन ऑफ द सैंडल्स If possible, after listening to this chapter, please offer some fruits or something sweet to the deities. The recitation begins now. He left the royal ladies at Ayodhya, and all faithful to his promise, turned to his priests and said sadly, "This day I go to Nandi Grama. Pray, give me leave." This place serves to heighten my grief. I will take myself away from these scenes and try my best to bear it. His Majesty has gone back to Swarga. Rama has buried himself in the woods. My brother of boundless fame is best suited to rule over this vast kingdom. I will eagerly await his return among us, from my outposts around the city. And to him replied Vashishta and the other rishis, "You speak well and like one who has devoted body and soul to his brother. Your kin find in you a noble and affectionate guardian of their interests. Your brothers are dearer to you. Your virtuous sentiments meet with unanimous approval." Bharata saluted the royal ladies and set out with Shatrughna, while Vashishta and the other Maharishis, Brahmanas, and priests led the way. Ministers and officers of state followed him, as also the troops and citizens of Ayodhya. They travelled east towards Nandi Grama, and when they were there, Bharata got down from his chariot with Rama's sandals reverently placed on his head, and said to those around. Far from me be the world censure that Kaike conspired to get him the crown under the guise of demanding our boons from Dasharatha. The king consented there too, and Bharata quietly stepped into his place. My brother has placed me in charge of this kingdom, and I should render it back to him safe and undiminished. I have neither the power nor the right to govern it. Yon sandals have been impressed with the sacred feet and are endowed with the power to govern and prosper this kingdom more than any other thing. He saluted with humble reverence the representative of Rama, entrusted them with the responsibility of government, and said to his ministers and citizens, "These be the holy feet of Rama, whom the worlds obey and reverence. He is present here." Pay him all reverence, all royal honors, the umbrella of the state and the charities. The sandals impregnated with the might and greatness of Raghava, my guru, will secure to Dharma a more glorious reign. Out of his love to me, he has entrusted me with his kingdom, and these sandals are sent by him to represent him. So I will guard them till his return, even as my life. Fear not. Very soon we shall see him again. I will place these under his feet and rejoice at the glorious sight. I will transfer the burden of state to him. I will seat him on his throne. I will ever wait at his side and render glad service to him in every way. Then my sins will fall away from me, every one of them. I will behold the millions of his subjects beside themselves with joy during the coronation of Rama, and it will give me infinitely greater pleasure and fame than I could ever hope to get by possessing myself of this empire of Koshala. Thus lamenting, he abode at Nandi Grama along with his ministers and occupied himself with the cares of the government, heavy of heart. Clad as a hermit in matted hair, deer skin, and dress of bark, he bore in mind the commands of Rama and installed his sandal with reverence, eagerly expectant of the day of his return. Supremely devoted to Rama, utterly faithful to his word, he rendered humble report to them of the day's proceedings. Every plan, every scheme, and every proposal was first submitted to Rama Sandals. Everything that was given to Bharata, rare and precious, was first offered to the Sandals. And so did Bharata govern the vast empire. That noble soul, the happy slave of Rama Sandals, which gave him power and capacity to discharge his duty. मंगलम कौशलेन्द्राय महनीय गुणाब्दे चक्रवर्ती धर्मजाय सर्वभौमाय मंगलम